Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to explain you RARP protocol. That is Reverse Address Resolution Protocol. So, in my previous video, I have explained you how ARP protocol is there, right? You can observe this that I have explained in my last video. See, RARP protocol, that is Reverse of ARP protocol. And to understand this protocol, let me tell you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. See, first I'll be explaining you basics of RARP protocol. Then I'll explain you how RARP protocol works. And then I'll explain you how many limitations are there with this protocol. And because of these limitations, nowadays in computer network, we use this DHCP protocol. We don't use RARP protocol. And as we don't use this protocol nowadays in computer network, I cannot show you practical example, but still. Let us try to understand this protocol that will give you more clarity regarding how this protocol was implemented way back in 1990s. So, let us see the basics first. See, RARP means reverse ARP, reverse address resolution protocol. So, ARP that we have seen it in my last video, RARP is reverse of ARP. See, it performs reverse function of ARP protocol. In ARP protocol, we have seen how to map IP address with MAP address, right? While with RARP protocol, we will be mapping MAC address with IP address. See, RARP is primarily used in legacy environment or specialized scenario where devices needs to obtain their IP address dynamically based on their MAC address. See, here what we are dealing with to do is, we are dealing with to assign IP address to device. If device is not assigned with IP address, then by having RARP protocol, we can assign IP address, right? Broadly, RARP is replaced by DHCP because of there are some limitations which is there with RARP. We will discuss about those limitations even, but first we need to understand how RARP is functioning. So, let us see how working is there with RARP protocol. So, in working of RARP protocol, we need to understand what we need to do. See, in RARP protocol, what we do is we provide configured IP address to given device. So, obviously, if one device is not having configured IP address, then that device will be using this protocol to have configured IP address. And once that device is having configured IP address, that device can communicate in entire computer network, right? So, RARP protocol that we use it to have configured IP address, right? Let me show you how it is happening. See, a device typically displays workstation or network booting device or startup and does not have a configured IP address. So, a device which is not having configured IP address, that device will be using this protocol. So, what that device will do? That device will send RARP request broadcast packet to local area network. Let me show you how. Like for example, here we are having one local area network. And in this local area network, let us consider this device A that is newly connected device. And this device is not having configured IP address. So this device will do what? This device will forward, this device will forward RARP request. See, this device will forward RARP request, right? And this request will go to this router and this router will broadcast it over here. This router will broadcast it over here. Now, see, broadcasting of, broadcasting of frame can be done with the use of MAC address, right? It is not compulsory like with the use of IP address only we can do broadcast. I have told you, in data link layer, we have MAC address and as if this device, as if this device uses destination MAC address as per all apps, FFFF, 12 digit hexadecimal MAC address. If that is all F, means all ones are there in binary, then that will get broadcasted over here in this network. So, that is how RARP request that is getting broadcasted by this computer, right? This computer is not having configured IP address. So, what will happen? This RARP request that will go to all the computers in this network. Now, in this network, there will be RARP server. That RARP server, that RARP server 
that will be receiving this request right so see this device will send rirp request that will be broadcast packet in this given network it will be requesting for ip address with its mac address so in this rirp request it will be giving its own mac address right it will be giving its own mac address and it will be broadcasting it over here see rirp server that will be receiving this frame which is rirp request and see rirp server that is dedicated server for this entire network right for this given lan rirp server usually a dedicated server on given network and it will be receiving broadcast rirp request so that request is reached over here to rirp server now rirp server will do what rirp server will looks up mac address in its database and it will determine corresponding ip address so see with this server with this server there will be memory and there will be table so in that table there will be mac address and ip address and it will see the entries over here if entry is not available for this right then it will add one new entry with new mac address and it will assign whatever ip that is available for this entire network right so what this rirp server will do is it will check its table first in its table there will be entries of mac with ip right and if this mac is not available over here then it will add new entry over here and whatever ip is available it will assign particular ip to given mac right so see rirp server will send one unicast rirp reply so now what it does is it will add this request it will add one new mac address of this it will assign one ip and it will give it will give a packet it will give a packet that is rarp reply it will give rarp reply right and it will be unicast it will be unicast frame right so this frame will go to this host a and once this frame reaches to host a host a will be having dedicated ip which is provided by rirp server right and once this frame reaches over here this host will be having mac address as well as ip address now this host is allowed to communicate in the computer network see this is how it is working right so the device will receive rirp reply packet and it will configure itself with obtained ip address so here previously we were not been having ip address with this device a with the use of rirp request it will be requesting to rirp server rirp server will add this mac address over here in this entry and it will give reply as rirp reply it will go to this device now this device will be having its configured ip address now with this ip address it can communicate in this entire computer network see this is how it is working right but there are some essential drawbacks which is there with this protocol and because of that this protocol is nowadays not used practically in entire globe let me explain you what are those limitations so in limitations of rirp protocol you should know rirp protocol relies on dedicated rirp server i have explained that right see here with any lan there has to have rirp server so this protocol relies on dedicated rirp server which becomes single point of failure so as if rirp server is getting failed then entire network will get failed over here right see rirp does not provide any authentication or security mechanism so here with this protocol we don't have any authentication mechanism here we don't have any security mechanism and because of that it is possible you may give services to unauthorized ip and because of that we are not using rirp protocol this protocol is replaced by dhcp protocol so widely nowadays in computer network for ip assignment we use dhcp protocol previously in 1990s we have been using this protocol so still if anything that you would like to share over here please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video